present George Edwards in Frankenstein. Baron Frankenstein related his experiences to Captain Walton, the master of the Voyager, the vessel which was bound on a journey in polar exploration. While the Voyager was icebound, Captain Walton spent much time with Baron Frankenstein, who was gradually recovering his health. Oh, Baron Frankenstein, I thought perhaps you might care to look at my journal. I have noted your story down very carefully. If you will leave it, I will look through it, Captain. You do not mind if I make some annotation? Oh, not at all. I will be very grateful. I am glad that you have noted my story in your journal because something tells me that I will never return to civilization. You must not say that. You are recovering splendidly. I know, I know, but I dare not return until I am certain that the monster is dead. We know that he is somewhere out there in the white waste waiting to wreak his foul vengeance on some defenseless human being. You will pardon my contradicting you, Baron, but we do not know that. I think the monster must have perished in the blizzard. Uh, what part of my story did I reach yesterday? You were telling of your conversation with the monster. You met him after he had murdered the peasant, and he threatened to kill your wife unless you created a mate for him. Yes. Yeah. I sat there in the little peasant cottage, and I was horrified at the monster's words. He gazed at me for some time, and then I... Oh, monster, you seek to arouse my sympathy. Do you not know that you have turned my wife against me? Had I but heeded her advice, you would never have lived. I came to destroy you the day after your creation, but I was too late. You had escaped, and you had already taken a life. I will take no more lives if you will accede to my request. When I left your home, I wandered through the woods, and there I saw the child whom you called William. As soon as he saw me, he screamed and sought to run away. But I seized him by the arm and spoke softly to him, bidding him not to be afraid. He told me that his uncle was Baron Frankenstein and that I would be punished if I harmed him. At the mention of your name, I trembled with rage. And in a fit of black rage and despair, I killed the child. Just as I shall kill all of your family unless you create for me a mate. I cannot bring myself to do such a thing. You are hideous and horrible. Were I to create another like you, I might unleash another horror on the world. My companion must be as deformed and horrible as myself. One from whom everyone will shrink and who will turn to me for comfort. But I cannot do it. You must do it, or I will work against you so that you shall curse the very day that you were born, so that you will curse those whose hands created me. I do curse them now. I seek to reason with you. You are my creator. Let me feel gratitude towards you. Let me see that I excite the sympathy of some existing being. Do not, I beg of you, deny me my reward. I have tried to paint for you a picture of misery, the horror, and the suffering which I have undergone. 
All I ask is a mate as hideous and repulsive as myself. Do I see compassion in your eyes? And if I consent, what then? If you consent, neither you nor every other human being shall ever see us again. I will take my mate and go to the vast and frozen wastes of the north. Your body is deformed and your mind is deformed. I have learned that I cannot control the mind of any creature which I create. If I create a mate for you, she will also have the desire to kill, to inflict misery on others. Oh, I, I dare not do it. If you refuse, I swear that all you know and love shall die as others have died. I will haunt this earth, the enemy of mankind, who are my enemies. So be it. I must consent to your demand on your solemn oath that you will take your mate into exile so that none will ever see you again. Do you? Do you swear to that? I swear by the sun and by the blue sky of heaven and by the fire of the love that burns in my heart that if you grant my prayer, you will never behold me again. Depart to your home and commence your labors. I shall watch your progress with anxiety. And mark this well. When you are ready, when your labors are complete, I shall appear. And if you fail me, you know the penalty. Farewell, Frankenstein. I trust that soon we shall meet again. And that the meeting shall bring happiness. But, Baron Frankenstein, surely you did not accede to the monster's request? Well, after he had left the little cottage, I sat and I thought for a long time. I realized that he was a vile and horrible creature. And that he had demanded that I should create just such another creature. And my heart was heavy. With dragging footsteps, I returned home where I found my wife and my friend Ernst Claval awaiting me. As soon as I entered, Elizabeth Oh, Victor, I am so glad you have returned. I drove you away with harsh words last night, but I regretted my words. Tell me, what news? The monster still lives. Victor, my friend, I have heard of your troubles. Elizabeth has told me. Let me offer you all the aid that I can. Together we shall destroy this vile creature. Have no fear. The monster will do no more harm. There will be no other death. How can you know that? Well, I have spoken with him. And there shall be no more death. Rest assured of that, Elizabeth. Oh, I am so glad. But can you touch this monster? I have been greatly punished for my sins. Tell me this, Victor. Did you consent to the monster's, monster's request? Surely you did not promise to create a mate for him. Elizabeth, there is so much at stake. So much harm has been done. Victor, you cannot do it. Already there is one vile, bloodthirsty monster roaming here. Dare you create another? Oh, give me time to think, please. Oh, Elizabeth, he is upset. Leave him alone with me now and I will talk with him. Oh, I am thoughtless. Poor Victor has been out all night. He needs refreshment. I will see that a meal is prepared for you, Victor. Oh, I thank you, Elizabeth. Remain here with Ernst, and we shall talk of the matter later. Victor, my poor friend, my heart is heavy for you. What can I do to help you? Oh, help me, Ernst. I must grant the monster's demand. I tried to kill him. My shot wounded him, but he did not die. And before I could fire again, he took the gun from me. Did you promise to create a mate for him? I did, but my, my work shall not be done here. I will travel to some lonely island, and there I will have to study again for many months. And there I will create a mate for the monster, which I created. You must not do it, Victor. I must do it. Oh, having created one such hideous monstrosity as a sin, a sin for which you have paid heavily, do not create another. If I do not, your life is in danger. Elizabeth's life is in danger. I must do as the monster says. So be it. I shall accompany you, and I will help you with your work. Oh, you are kind, my friend. A friend of mine has a cottage on a little island in the Orkneys. I know that he will lend us this cottage, and you will be able to conduct your work there. 
But I am against it, Victor. I do not think you should do it. Uh, I must do it. I feel sure that if I grant his request, there will be no further trouble. But how can you be sure? You cannot control the minds of the creatures which you create. So, we shall tell Elizabeth you are taking me away from my health, that I am going for a sea trip for several months. Then I will be able to return here to find happiness when my work is done. It seems the only way. The servants are preparing a meal for you, Victor. Oh, thank you, Elizabeth. I have just been talking matters over with Ernst, and he thinks that I should go away with him for a sea trip. My health has been undermined by all this dreadful worry. And you are going away without me? No, but you will be safe here. I know that the monster will not harm you. I feel that I must go away without you this time, Elizabeth. Where are you going? We have not decided yet. But will you not trust him to my care, Elizabeth? I will, Ernst. But I want to ask you one question, Victor. Do you intend to grant the monster's demand? My dear, I am going away from here so that I will not grant the monster's demand. My laboratory and all my instruments are here. I am leaving them. I am striving to forget about the monster. You need have no fear. I know that the monster will do no further harm. What did you say to him? Well, I do not like to think of it. But I spoke with him and he swears that he will not commit another murder. Is he not to be punished for the murder he has already committed? Oh, there is nothing we can do at present, my dear. If the Burgomaster's men find the monster, they will kill him. Believe me, Elizabeth, Victor is acting for the best. Be content to leave him in my charge. I must be content. Uh, you have nothing to fear, Elizabeth. Now wait here until I return. I will recover my health. I will forget the miseries of the past. When I come back here, I swear that you and I shall never be parted again. And nothing shall ever happen to Ma. Uh, did you eventually go to that island in the Orkneys, Baron Frankenstein? I went to the island in the Orkneys. I will tell you of my experiences if you come to me again a little later, Captain Walton. I wish to look through your journal now, and I may make several corrections. Very well, Baron Frankenstein. I will leave you alone now, but I will return later. Thank you.